I guarantee you this though, if you'd done this test a few years ago, the difference between my biological age and my actual age would be massive in the wrong direction because Hi guys, Tony here. Today we're going to be uh, looking at my biological age. This is going through my epigenetics and therefore we'll be looking further into my DNA as that has an impact on controlling my epigenetics and reversing my age. So if you look here, I'm 35 on the sheet, but basically in reality I was what 35.9 since uh, it was just before my birthday. So I'm pretty much bang on, give or take a month or something else my biological age and if you look at the bottom now that uh, inflammation is a key kind of uh, indicator they're closely aligned so if I've got uh, things I'm doing are inflaming my body and making my biological age older so what have I done since this uh, sample being taken on the 12th of September I've uh, massively increased my sleep I've got a Fitbit and I track that both sleep and stress I think I've been burning the candle a bit too much at both ends and that is causing inflammation. I've been looking at my sleep and I've been improving on the quality of it and the time I fall asleep also. As if you get your circadian rhythm set, if you fall asleep before midnight, ideally two hours before, then those, each one of those hours is worth twice as much as hours in the early hours of the morning. You get more growth hormone release. My diet's become more varied, a lot more nutritious food, say like polyphenols. I was, I've been having raw cocoa nibs. Green coffee too, one of the perks of knowing someone that works at a brewery, I guess. Just general food that boosts uh, methylation. Methylation is the process of how your genes turn on and off. Your genes being controlled. So if you're not methylating properly, then you get a buildup of homocysteine in your body, which is like a toxin that's showing your body's inflamed. There's foods I've tried recently, I've never tried before in my life, like say it's organic celery, it's gotta be organic because uh, they spray a lot of pesticides on them. Some things it's, it's negligible, but certain products, say like with oats also, they spray a lot on that. And another one I've never had is beetroot, unless it's in crisp form, which is uh, doesn't really count. So I've been having that blended into a smoothie, you know? I've learned to like it. I've been going outside more because obviously sunlight is good for you. You get that uh, red light that boosts healing and reduces inflammation. You're gonna, this is a word you're gonna keep hearing again and again in the health and fitness industry or in just general kind of news because they often, they label it the same as they call it inflammaging now. So it's so closely aligned with uh, diseases, which disease is basically closely aligned with aging. That's why some doctors even call aging a disease because 80, 90% of diseases are caused by getting old. I'm trying to be smarter with my training, not overtraining in the gym, you know, especially with weights. I try and do maximum amount of volume, you know, doing set after set, doing circuits basically, so I don't need to rest at all. And overall, that can mean a lot of volume of weights being lifted through that session. Um, focusing more on cardio as well because doing a bit of you know, hill sprints or whatever it is, you know, hit training and but plenty of just just 20 minute jogs, things like that. Just get your body going. You don't, it doesn't, you don't have to run marathons. In fact, if you were to regularly run marathons, that would actually increase your inflammation. So it's just getting the right amount of exercise. I hadn't been taking this supplement for very long at the point of this test, but I've been continued with that. So you've got things like MNN, which boosts NAD levels in your body, and that's closely aligned with, that's another hallmark of aging. To reduce it down further, the inflammation, I've uh, incorporated the peptide BPC157, so I do a 500 milligram capture of that every morning. And I'm gonna do that just for a month. Another peptide I've uh, incorporated, and this one, you only do it for 20 days and you do that twice a year and that's called epitalon and that increases the length of your telomeres which is your, your chromosomes on the end of your chromosomes so it effectively uh, increases the life of your cell and because your cell say divides 50 times over your whole lifetime if you make that cell live longer then that is a positive thing for longevity telomere length being one of the nine hallmarks of longevity it also helps with releasing melatonin and uh, your heart health too in studies over 15 years. They showed a dramatic reduction in heart disease and it's been shown to uh, lower the incidence of cancer too. Another one that can help with lowering uh, inflammation in your muscles, joints and things is uh, TB500. Uh, so I'll be maybe looking to incorporate some of that and uh, 
with the cold and flu season coming up, there's another one that helps boost your immune system. And that's called Thymosin Alpha-1, a very similar peptide, but this one also clears out senescent cells, which are like zombie cells in your body. And when you've got a big buildup of them, it causes uh, lots of inflammation and generally just is associated with disease. If you look at my memory age, obviously I'm, what would it be, 1.4 years different to my actual age. And so what I've been working on since then is really just trying to cut out uh, sleeping pills because they're really bad for your brain. Same with alcohol, that's that's definitely not good for your brain cells. Just, but also it just flips back on this whole inflammation thing. If I lower that, then that'll have a positive effect on my brain health. I guarantee you this though, if you'd done this test a few years ago, the difference between my biological age and my actual age would be massive in the wrong direction because all that alcohol, that really fucks you up badly. And whenever if you can see it in your blood, it really it causes so much liver inflammation and everything. It, you, it Basically, it comes across as if you're in a really ill, dying state when you drink, bit well, binge drink often, that is. Other notable things I've done to uh, decrease this number is uh, cut out uh, just normal fluoride toothpaste because what that does is it's like, uh, like an antibiotic in your mouth and that's killing uh, the good bacteria in there too and you're doing that twice a day. And what that does is it affects your body's ability to, uh, to make uh, nitric oxide which is fundamental for opening, you know, dilating your um, veins and then basically getting blood around your body. It's a real anti-aging effect having your body being able to do that. The other one is cutting out these processed vegetables that... Uh, uh, have been oxidized and when you cook them they even uh, oxidize further still so you know your rapeseed oil sunflower oil granola oil they're just in all these packaged foods obviously people use them at home just don't use them they really make a big difference to that inflammation so now i use coconut oil for cooking and for as a cold oil i use olive oil still even if i was going to cook with it it's not as good as coconut oil, but it's way less heat resistant to uh, some of these other oils I've just mentioned. So here are my physical attributes. Um, a few things above normal. And yeah, I guess I already knew that anaerobically I'm not the best. If I uh, over push myself, then I get gloopy saliva, my throat's all lit up. One thing I am gifted is a power to weight ratio. So maybe I could have been a power lifter if I'd uh, started a bit younger. But as you'll find out soon, I've got some risks of certain injuries. So with this company, Mudu, we can uh, obviously like uh, tailor your diet specifically to your DNA. As if whether or not you've got the time to calculate your macros. It can be something just as a temporary thing, just to give you an idea of what you're having. And then it's easier for you to kind of judge it by eye in the future. So yeah, normal carbohydrate response. So I can have some. Obviously, it doesn't mean I can just scoff my face on pasta either poor saturated fat response. So if I was on the carnivore diet, it probably wouldn't uh, fare with me that well. But on the other hand, I can uh, absorb a fair amount of protein. So it's, I'm a bit of an all-rounder really, like a balanced diet. And that's what I've been having. And you can see here, increased sugar response. The thing is with sugar, there is no right amount because your liver effectively deals with it exactly the same as alcohol. So if you just have a small amount, if you just say, oh, if you have a beer, will that mess up your liver? No, because it's not enough for your um, digestive system to have to bleed out and use your liver so your, your digestion can deal with it. It's the same with sugar when you have too much of it. It's just something to minimize in your diet in general. I mean, I used to be 120 kilos, now I'm just over 80. As you can see, being a yo-yo dieter, it doesn't really affect me well, but uh, for anyone, you, know, you wouldn't want to be bulking and cutting to a huge degree but even to a small amount for me is not good. So, and it's like, that's my style anyway. I like to just keep like a nice shape all year round rather than beefing up and cutting down. Effectively, it puts stress on your cells and uh, causes cancer. But as you can see, some people's genes, they can tolerate it and it doesn't seem to affect them. So now I've started supplementing certain vitamins. It often gets overlooked vitamins because people think, oh, I'll just take a multivitamin. And then I just cover all bases. And no, it doesn't work like that because if you say over supplement vitamin C, then it can actually affect your athletic performance. And also you don't want to take low quality vitamins. You want to take ones that are really bioavailable. My highest risk one is vitamin B12. And since doing this, I've been really supplementing with that. 
and uh, yeah, my mouth ulcers, they've uh, kind of cleared up completely. It's interesting, so because I've now stopped drinking, that uh, when I would drink, I would get mouth ulcers, and that really affects your body's ability to absorb vitamin B12. As you can see, choline is of particular benefit to me, so since doing this, I've uh, been supplementing with that after my morning gym session, as that's the best time to take it because your brain would have, uh, so your body would have used up a lot of your choline sources and so by supplementing it then you get giving fuel back to your brain. A natural way of doing it would be to say eat eggs but um, I rarely ever eat them or say liver. Again I don't eat liver that often, once every week or every couple of weeks. And as you saw before if I was to eat a lot of eggs I don't respond well to saturated fat so then I'd have that negative. And this is where this whole tailing of your diet really comes in handy using your DNA. Funny enough, I did stop doing creatine before I got these results because I was thinking, this is really expensive. Am I getting really much from it? And what it turns out, yeah, I, I get some, but not a great deal of benefit from it. And it's gone up fourfold in price. It's not to say I won't ever do it again because it does have benefits to your body. It's just maybe doing blasts of it, a cycle, i.e. building up your creatine stores in your muscle and then just letting it slowly peter down rather than doing it all year round like I was before and then forgetting it was even <laughs> in my body. Arginine is one I've now been incorporating that's really important for you know doing it before a workout to obviously get your basal dilation but it also helps with uh, longevity because uh, when you get blood flowing around your body it actually is beneficial to your health and arginine alpha keto gatorade is the full name of it actually helps with clearing out senescent cells in your body. I'm slightly sensitive to caffeine and you'll see further in this there, the caffeine, how it affects my sleep and yet yeah, I'm one of those people and I knew that already but I just have to be extra vigilant because these little things can, your, the quality of your sleep is so important. I've heard of athletes where they're just dialing in this using their DNA and their, their metrics go through the roof when they just work out things that uh, they've been doing, say like drinking a couple of cans of Red Bull, playing a game like a football game in the evening and when they have this all looked into and their coaches find out just all these little things that they tweak and it just makes a huge difference so a high stress response to pressure so I have to be careful to do things like meditation not to a great amount because my time's too precious but just doing a little bit here and there I used to think this stuff is all woo woo but when they actually analyze what it does to your body, meditation, then there are actual physiological changes. It is a proven benefit to your health. See, I've got a slightly faster physical decline, though I'm not too worried because I'm an active person, so I'm not, I would counteract that. As you can see, I've got slight risks for injuries. I mean, if I overtrain a gym, I do start to feel it in my joints now. This is why I take that, obviously that BPC, I've started using that. I also take a collagen with glucosamine as that helps cope the joint, make things a lot more supple. As you can see, I'm a possible workaholic. I think I get that from my dad's side. He used to work on movies, building props, and he worked some crazy hours, and he, he ended up working into his early 70s. So. Um, it's just something I've got to watch out for is just not overstressing myself. I mean, stress for me actually can accumulate fat around my stomach. I'm more likely to eat junk food, but also my digestive system actually diverts blood away from it. So it's something you really got to moderate for myself. Or just, just having good sleep hygiene practice. So in the evening, just not getting lots of blue light, but um, not thinking about work too. You have some time, downtime basically, where you're doing things you enjoy that relax you, and then you sleep well, and then you're less stressed because you're better slept. So it's all, it's all interconnected, isn't it? As you can see, I've got no risk of gluten intolerance. It's not something that's ever been essential in our diet, it's just some people can tolerate it better than others. You can see I've got high risk of gum disease, and in the last few weeks, I realized that I had these wires behind my teeth, just holding them straight, and I just thought, no, this is not worth it anymore because I can't floss properly. The risk to my gums is too great. So I've just had them stripped off and now I can floss and I just wear those little retainers that you just put in just to hold them straight. See, absolutely no risk to my heart health. I've never had any problems with blood pressure, or anything like that. As you can see, I've got very average skin genetics. So in 10 years time, when you're watching my videos, if I look exactly the same, then you know it's my lifestyle, not uh, my genes that are keeping me young. So that was my DNA results. So in January, I'll do another epigenetics test. Obviously not the DNA part of it, because that never changes your DNA. 
And fingers crossed, I'm going to reverse my biological age if I'm doing all the right things. You know, each different piece of the puzzle, I'm trying to fix it in one different way. You know, I mentioned about the senescent cells clearing out them, inflammation lowering that, obviously, and doing things like ice baths, which helps out mitochondrial biogenesis, the creation of new mitochondria, and that helps with your aging as well as your energy. So let's see what happens. Cool. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.